We sell not only because we want to make money. We sell because we want to serve our customers first. Money is just a byproduct of that. When you come from a place of service, you can always sell better. Hey there, I'm Mai De Leon, and my mission is to help creatives like you translate what you love to do into a highly profitable income. I'm a mom of three who began as a lettering artist and grew it into a six-figure business. If I made it possible, so can you. Every week, we'll dive deep into topics like building your confidence, getting comfortable talking about money, and nurturing your passion while juggling life and family. So if you're an ambitious creative who wants to craft the life you love, get cozy, feel at home, and listen to The Confident Creator Show. Hey creators, you're listening to episode number 13. In episode 4, we talked about the three reasons why no one is buying your art. That was such a wake-up call for so many of our listeners. After that episode, we received even more questions about selling products online, how challenging it is, and some don't even know if they can do it. I want you to know that I'm listening and I'm here today to help you with that. This episode is also a follow-up of episode 12 where we talked about why now is the best time to sell online. So if you've not listened to that yet, I highly recommend you do. It's a great one because I did talk about the best ways to figure out what to sell and some real life examples from people I know and who have found ways to thrive during this crisis. So if you haven't tried selling online yet, Or you've been doing it for a while, but you're either not seeing great results or you want to continuously grow and improve what's already working for you, then you're in for a treat. Because in this episode, we'll talk about the five ways to effectively sell your products and services. There are various ways to make money online. But as a creative, artist, or designer, we're going to dive deep into products and services you can offer. One of the very first questions you might be wondering about is, what can I sell online as an artist? Well, let's look at what I've personally done over the years. When I started out, I was doing client work and I was also selling original works art prints, as well as downloadable art prints to give people the option to download and print on their own. I was also teaching in-person workshops. And when it became difficult for me to do any of those because of my myofascial pain syndrome, I started teaching online and launched my flagship course, Mastering Hand Lettering. It also became apparent that my audience needed more from me when artists started asking me questions about growing their business. And before I knew it, I became a creative coach. But let me tell you, it wasn't all rainbows and unicorns. There were things that didn't work for me personally. And now I'm not saying that you shouldn't consider these because these options might work for you. For example, I also experimented with selling physical products, but it didn't work out because 1. I don't like having an inventory of prints and merchandise that I'm not sure I'll be able to sell out. 2. I don't like dealing with shipping and the fees that come with it. And 3. With kids in school and a special needs one, packing orders is simply not something I'd like to spend time on. It was because of that failed experiment I decided that I'll only be selling products or services that don't require inventory, too much labor, and shipping. Like I said, this could be different for you. That was my personal preference and if you look out there, there are plenty of artists who do well selling physical products and loving the whole process of it. So don't be afraid to experiment and try out different things. And also, don't be afraid to change and evolve your business. I had to stop lettering because of my situation, but it didn't stop me from serving my community. Now, let's get to the examples of products or services you can offer online, starting with physical products. You can sell prints and merchandise with your artwork on it, like stickers, pins, t-shirts, and mugs. 
even bed linens or temporary tattoos. There's really no limit to where you can apply your artwork on as long as you get creative. Take a look at different websites for some of the product they print art on to get your brain juice flowing. If you're a crafter or a maker, don't be limited by only selling the product you create. I've seen knitters sell knitting kits online as well as knitted products. It's not impossible to sell things you actually love doing. Now again, selling online is not just limited to housing physical products in your online shop. There's a wide array of products and services you can offer as well, including digital products. So let's get into that. What digital products can you offer to your audience and customers as a creative? There's digital prints, worksheets, ebooks, brushes, texture packs, fonts. You can also sell your illustrations or other artwork for companies to use on their product. This type of service is called art licensing, where you still own the copyright of your artwork and you're just letting the company use the design on their products for either a share of the sale or for a set fee. One good example is Disney licensing their characters. That's why there's so many Disney products out there. Another example was when I was designing scrapbook kits. I was at first creating patterns and designs for my own use, but I eventually started selling or licensing those pattern designs to fabric companies. And it's not just limited to fabrics. Think wallpaper designs, gift wrappers, and more. And earlier I mentioned workshops. Yes, this is before COVID. Teaching what you know in in in-person workshops is an effective way to help your community while making money. And not only that, teaching allows you to learn so many new things as well. You'll be surprised by the things you'll learn from your students and their experiences as you interact with them. Of course, right now, in-person workshops are not possible. But don't let that stop you because you can still teach your workshops online. Now, as for services, because I'm a letterer, I sell or license my lettering work to companies for their products, branding, and marketing. And you can do the same. And to do that, you need to have a body of work to attract companies to hire you. If you're new to creating art, it may take a while before you can sell something because you have to build your authority and credibility online. You need to be consistently showing up and building your online following or your email list. Now, if you've already built a following online, maybe your website or social media, you may be able to do things a little faster. But of course, that will all vary depending on your implementation. You need to focus on getting better at engaging your audience too. Merely posting something won't be enough if your audience doesn't engage with your posts. It's either your post doesn't relate to them or you have attracted the wrong audience. But today is not about building your online following. We'll do a separate episode on that for those who want to know more. For now, let's get into the second part of this episode. Back in episode 4, we talked about the three reasons why no one is buying your art. But how do you effectively sell your art? Well, I'm going to be sharing with you five ways to effectively sell your products and services online. Number one is, of course, your product. Make sure you have the right product and services for the right people. Now, what do I mean by the right products and services? And who is the right person or people you should be selling to? Your products and services must be one that your current audience is continuously asking you for. It's that same question you get asked again and again, whether it's through email, DMs, or comments on your social media channels. Maybe your audience is always asking you how you create specific effects or textures in your illustration or painting or lettering. That could translate into you selling them specific tools you use like the brushes or even lettering or calligraphy practice sheets to help them achieve the same level of professional finish they see in your work. What if they're asking you about techniques or how to start to paint or illustrate or to letter more effectively? That means they want to learn how you're doing what you're doing. You can then offer workshops to teach them your techniques. 
And remember this, you don't have to be afraid of teaching. If your audience is asking you for it, that means they trust you enough and they want to learn from you. Now, if your audience is saying they'd love to have that knitted scarf to gift to someone, that means your audience loves what you make and is willing to pay for it. So go and create products using your skills and sell it to them. Take some time to go through all the comments and messages you get and read through what your community is asking from you. That will be the right products or services you can offer. Number two, show the transformation. Don't just sell a product or a service. Here's the thing when it comes to selling. You can't just put up something online, whether through a third-party site like Etsy or your own website, put the name of the item, and put in descriptive words like the dimensions of the product and materials you use. Unless you have already established a super loyal and dedicated audience who are really eager to buy from you no matter what you put out there, you need to do more than that. You need to convince them that what you're selling is going to add value to their lives. And to do that, you need to show the transformation by showcasing the product you're selling in a setting that will help them envision how it will look like in their homes and sometimes in their lives. In the book, This is Marketing by Seth Godin, he gave a great example of why people don't want the thing you'll make. They want what it will do for them and how it will make them feel. There's a reason why mock-up photos are so in demand because it helps people visualize how things will look like in their own spaces and makers use these mock-ups in order to sell their products. Here's another excellent example. When I was designing scrapbook kits, I had a creative team of 10 to 30 people. They used my products to create scrapbook layouts that I then used to promote my kits. In these layouts, they showcase possible designs that my customers can do with my kits. They see the product in action, and that allows me to sell more because people can visualize how my kit can go together with their own photos. I wasn't just simply selling the product. I show people the possibilities of how they can use it too, and by doing so, I'm tapping into their emotion as well. How the kit was used for a specific layout can make them excited and inspired to create something out of it. You can take a look at your own buying habits. Why do you buy a product? What convinced you to buy item A instead of item B even though they might be the same thing or they might provide the same benefits? What made you decide to buy it? It also works when you sell services. If you are, let's say, offering personalized calligraphy services for corporate events, tell people how hiring you will make their event a success and more personal with a custom on-the-spot calligraphy for their guests. Let them visualize how their guests would feel and how they can make it a memorable event. So don't just merely sell your product. Always show what it can do for them. Number three is pricing. Pricing is a question that leaves many of us creatives stumped and confused. But here's a general idea of how you should price your products. If you're selling physical products, you need to consider the following. Shipping fees, packaging materials, the price of your raw materials, etc. You'll then need to add labor and your markup fees to come up with your retail price. And here's another approach you can do, especially if you're selling digital products. Start with an end goal in mind. Write down how much money you need to make per month to not only pay the bills, but to help you achieve the lifestyle you want. Then write down either the volume of products you're willing to create or the amount of work you're ready to work on. With those two figures, you then set a goal on the number of sales you need per month and that will give you a benchmark on how to price your products and services in order to achieve that goal. Don't be afraid to price what the product is worth. You can absolutely charge higher prices for your products and services, but make sure that the quality is worth the price you're charging. What do I mean by quality? 
Quality doesn't have to be just about how expensive the raw materials that you're using to create your product with. It could also be about the quality of service you provide and the level of experience you're giving to your customers. If you're going to sell a product that is, let's say, 20% higher than your competitors, you need to justify why. Is it because you're using materials from sustainable sources and provide fair wages to its workers? Or maybe because you provide personalization to your products that justify the price? If you want to learn more about pricing and how to charge higher confidently, I have a whole episode on that in episode number 7. Number four is identifying the challenges of your customers. Challenges are the reasons why your audience wants to buy in the first place. It's the problems that they are currently facing that needs a solution. That solution is going to be your products or services. But you'll only know what those challenges are when you start listening to your customers. In fact, they will tell you through their comments or on their own posts. Let's go back to our previous example of offering a custom calligraphy service for corporate live events. What do you think is the challenge that the host is facing? Corporations usually hold events because they want to increase their sales and profits. Having an event means they can show their offerings live with their audience and target customers. Now the challenge is how to make their target customers remember them and convince them to buy what they're offering. So usually, they'll give out a sample of their product or a memento with their branding on it. And personalizing that memento using a custom calligraphy service is how the company makes their guests feel even more special. That event will then become memorable. The guests use their memento or keep it in a place they always see. The branding is visible and something they see repeatedly, and because of that, it's always on their mind. It's like planting a seed and letting it ripen before you can harvest. Sometimes, the results are not always immediate. Some customers may take a few hours or even minutes to decide to buy, but others will take their sweet time. It's also a win for you, especially if your client allows you to give each person your name card along with a memento. That could lead to potential future work for you. But again, ask your client first before doing it. Don't assume anything. When you start identifying your customer's challenges, not only are you going to be better in articulating the transformation your products and services provide, it's also going to help you make better products in the future. Number five, address your customer's objections. This point comes at the heels of pricing. You're going to face objections and let me tell you, the very first thing and the most frequent objections you'll hear is about money. And I get this a lot, whether it's client work or in-person workshops and even now with my online courses and coaching program. Do not let that scare you into dropping your prices. You need to instead address this and any other objections people may have about your products and services. Apart from showing people the transformation, let them know the value of your prices and your rates. Don't just merely post the price and call it a day. Describe the product thoroughly and what it entails. Make them feel that they're buying something worthy rather than buying an overpriced product. And if they still think your price too high, let me tell you right now, these potentials are not worth pursuing. There are others out there who will appreciate the level of service and quality you are providing. It's better to focus on those potential customers than worry about those who will haggle your price to get what they want. Now, let's recap this episode because it's full of information. Today, we learn about the different products and services you can provide as a creative and looking beyond the common ideas. I hope that part got you thinking and excited. Then we learn how to be effective in selling. We know how to create the right products, why we need to show the transformation, effectively price your work, and how to justify your prices. 
And of course, the things that makers and creators usually take for granted are to address any objections that your potential customers might have and identify their challenges. This helps you to be better at convincing your customers to buy, and it helps you make better products and services to address their needs. All right, this was a super packed episode, and I hope you find it useful. And before I go, here's something I want you to remember. We sell not only because we want to make money. We sell because we want to serve our customers first. Money is just a byproduct of that. When you come from a place of service, you can always sell better. Because I don't want you to forget about these five ways to effectively sell, I created a downloadable guide for you. Feel free to grab it at mightileon.com slash 13. One more thing. I'm very excited to tell you that I'm currently working on a new program that will help you achieve your selling goals. It's going to come in the first week of October. I'll tell you more about it next week. Exciting weeks ahead, my friends, and I'm super thrilled to get this out to the world. That's it for today. And if you haven't done so, remember to subscribe to the podcast and leave it a review on iTunes. In the coming weeks, I'm also going to start featuring a listener for the week because I love reading your reviews and I want to share it with everyone listening. So once again, subscribe and leave the podcast a review after listening to this episode. And as always, keep creating and stay confident. Until next time, this is mine.